This is another one of those squeeze a fat guy into a little tiny space. I mean, what is going on here? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. A lot of things going on in the boat works today. Let's get started. If you own a small trailerable sailboat, this is a project you're gonna wanna try. Oftentimes these small sailboats, well, they don't come with any sort of lockers. The hulls and the forms of the boat are fairly simple in construction and the manufacturers never installed any lockers, especially in the cockpit. I'm a big believer in having storage in the cockpit area because it makes accessing extra lines and anchors and fenders and things like that easy when everything's very close to where you steer the boat. The Skipper 20 sailboat suffers from this same problem. Other than the covered well area for the engine, there's really not much storage in the cockpit. There was a perfect location in the cockpit area. I just needed to figure out how to install some watertight hatches with compartments. So one of the things I've been wanting to do is I want to add some lockers. I just think that there's a lot of wasted space underneath those cockpit settees, right? There's is empty space, but there's no locker lids. There's no lockers there. So we're going to fabricate something. This will allow me to get extra lines and fenders and all sorts of stuff kind of out of the way. We'll keep them stored inside those these lockers that I'm going to build. And I'm going to do it by using some watertight hatches I'll cut an opening in the top of the cockpit seats and I'll put these hatches in there, but I need a bin underneath it to kind of act as the locker itself. And to do that, I found these. Check it out. So what we've got here, these are two bins. I picked these up at Marine Sales and Repair. This is Earl the Pearl Shop. He's got an amazing assortment of all sorts of old boat parts. And inside there, he had these two bins. Now they're not the same color. They obviously came from different boats or something like that, but they're basically the same size. There's uh, they're they're basically like for almost like a dash glove box. That's why there's this piece of plastic right here. There was one over here. I just cut it out. It looks like this over here. And uh, this was here. I cut it out. Now it opens it up. Great. We got this bin. We'll be able to use this bin and mount it up underneath the cockpit seat. Now it's made of very light plastic. So what we're going to do is we'll go through the outside here and we'll add a layer of fiberglass, beef this thing up. We'll clean it, maybe paint it, be ready to go. Same thing with this one. We got to cut off this piece of plastic right here. We'll just kind of take it down. It's kind of glued inside there. All right. The bins turned out to be a bargain. They were only $25 a piece. Now, not everyone has a secret boat parts treasure house around the corner. So you may have to fabricate your own bin and you can do this using my method to fabricate fiberglass parts. I did a video on this for the engine room vents and it explains exactly how you might actually build a fiberglass part. Be sure to check it out. In this case, we've got a great situation where we we can reuse an old boat part and with a little modification we can repurpose it for something else. It doesn't take much fiberglass cloth to reinforce the plastic. What we're really doing is building up the flange because the flange is what's going to be mounted to the underside of the cockpit deck. A little bit of paint solves all color problems. It makes everything look like it belongs. Motor City Boatworks has no sponsors. I get no compensation from any of the products or the items that I talk about on my channel. Please subscribe and tell a friend. Spread the word about Motor City Boatworks. I bought these watertight hatches from a discount marine store. I chose them based on availability and the price point. I would have liked to have got something bigger, but I've got to stay within the budget. There are very similar hatches as you will see on Amazon, and you've got to be careful because many of them are made from non-UV stabilized plastic. They will yellow over time in the sunlight. The hatches are the most expensive part of this project. They can run upwards of 100 to $200 a piece. From the hatches, I make 
a template. I'll use this to get an idea of where the hatches will be positioned on the deck itself. The hatches are smaller than the actual bins, and that's okay because the flange is going to be attached to the underside of the deck. The hatches will provide the opening into the bin. Today I'm in the little works and I've got to figure out where I'm going to mount the cockpit lockers. There's only so much room fore and aft, and the seats in the cockpit are only so wide. Wide. So I've got to kind of figure out where I'm going to center everything and then I'm going to be cutting a hole in the deck. The tool for this job is one that I rarely use. It's the portable barrel handle jigsaw. I call it Mr. Jiggy. The deck of the Skipper 20 is really quite robust. It looks like it's going to be at least three quarters, maybe one inch thick. It's going to be fiberglass and probably marine plywood fiberglass on both sides. You've got to pre-drill four holes in the corners of the cutout. And even with an aggressive blade, it still takes a lot of effort to cut through the deck. I want to show you this here. This is the cutout from the deck on the Skipper 20. Take a look at this. This is the layup. You can see it's basically a quarter inch fiberglass with a half inch coring. Looks like marine plywood. It's really well constructed. I'm just amazed. Today I'm hoping for a moment of completion. I'm going to be installing the cockpit lockers inside the Skipper 20 sailboat. Uh, we prepared the lockers. These are the forms. We put some fiberglass on them. I've dry fitted this once before, so I believe that this process is going to work. This time we'll be using marine sealant, putting in all the screws to kind of tighten everything up. Basically, one of these is inside the boat and goes up where the cutout is. There's a cutout in the cockpit lazarette. This goes up inside there. They'll be sealing along here to seal it to the deck. We'll use screws to attach it to the deck, bring everything up tight. Now the question is, is how do you hold this in place while you screw this in there? And when I did the dry fit, what I used was some duct tape down inside here to basically grab onto this and pull it up inside the hole. And uh, I was able to then quickly kind of screw in the corners and get it into place. So that's what we're hoping. Right now I'm just preparing the screws, getting them into place. So I don't have to worry about them. These are self-tapping. They should uh, go right into the deck. To seal the bins to the underside of the deck, I'm using 3M5200. It's a marine adhesive sealant. 5200 is a very aggressive marine sealant and adhesive. Uh, it's used for below the water line, above the water line. It's used for construction on boats. And uh, it's generally considered a permanent type of adhesive. Once you put this on there, and everything cures up and everything, it's really kind of becomes one with the hulls. And I'm using that because I really want to add the extra adhesive strength to uh, these bins being attached. And, and I want them to be watertight so that if any water comes in the cockpit, well, it's not gonna run down below here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these up underneath here and get this into position you should see it appear there down from the hole. You know, the glue will probably stay good for an hour or two. It won't, it won't actually skin over for quite a while. Uh, so we've got plenty of time to be able to work with this. Um, it'll take 24 hours for it to fully cure. It'll be sticky here for quite a while. And it's workable for, you know, at least 30 minutes to an hour. I think we're good. So we can get this in place like so just like this all right you should see it there I'm gonna put some we're gonna use duct tape here so if we're lucky 
if we're lucky, what's going to happen is I'm going to pull on these and raise this up against here. Then I'll go down below, start screwing it in. So the way I did this last time was I just kind of... This is another one of those squeeze a fat guy into a little tiny space. I mean, what is going on here? What the f uh, it's the little pleasures of boat restoration. Squeezing into tiny spaces. Contorting yourself like a gymnast. That's how the locker goes in there, and this is how the hatch goes in there. We'll seal that and mount that in place permanently once we paint the deck, do all the non-skid, and this is all ready to go. For now, you can just see what it looks like. But there you go, we got a moment of completion. Look at that, fantastic. I think that looks pretty good, man. We're making some progress plugging along on the restoration of the Skipper 20 sailboat. Next on the list, we'll be doing some work on the forward hatch of the boat. What we got here is this is the forward hatch, right? Remember a previous owner, somebody had built some type of a DIY hatch here. They did a good job, but I've got a nice Bomar hatch from the 80s or 90s that I'm restoring. I'm gonna show you how we do that in a different episode. And we'll eventually take that hatch, we'll put it in here. We'll build it up so that we can mount the hatch on here. We'll put that Bomar hatch right on here. We'll do some trim work with the headliner and uh, it should look pretty fancy. It'll be nice and sleek and low profile and should match very well with the pilot house that we're gonna build. I've got lots of great episodes coming up on the Skipper 20 sailboat restoration. But in the meantime, be sure to catch up on all the episodes about the Alban 27 pocket trawler behind me. Right now, I'm in the middle of working on the aft cabin headliner project, it's gonna be something that you're gonna wanna see. If you have any questions for me or comments, Go ahead and drop me a line through the email. You can find it on the homepage of my YouTube channel or on the Motor City Boat Works website. And new this month, I want to let you know that Motor City Boat Works is now on Apple Podcasts. You can listen to a simulcast of all of the episodes in podcast format. I hope to be able to give some behind the scenes commentary and maybe answer some viewer questions about the projects that you see me working on in the boat works. I wanna thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated.